Hi, welcome to another video. This is the battery management system part two. So the last video ended with me using this 8-bit microcontroller, some expensive 2K precision resistors, cost over £5 for 10. I used four ADC channels. I felt that wasn't good enough. Plus, I didn't like this four-line LCD display. Couldn't fit enough data on it. This ADC converter is only a 10-bit. But before I disconnected this, Using a handful of relays, some a double pole, double throw. I put these on each battery. For this, for the double pole, double throw, I use one on each battery. Hopefully, the camera's focusing on them. And for these single, for these single pole, normally open, I had to use two on each battery. I've removed these voltage dividers. Put these relays on and simply created a program where the microcontroller, this one, jumped. The, the ground for the microcontroller jumped from the first cell, then to the second, then to the third, then to the fourth. It gave me more accurate results. I was really happy. One thing I was aware of and I wasn't happy with, once you use a relay, and you're messing about with something that can deliver high amounts of current, if one of these relays is not in the correct position, you'll have a fire. You only have to ask Hotpoint. Ask Hotpoint about their tumble dryers. Hotpoint Whirlpool. Anyway, so I wasn't happy. It'd been working for 12 hours solid. It was working really well. But then I programmed the chip whilst it was running. And for the experienced programmers out there, you'll know when you start programming the microcontroller, ports will change states. And all of a sudden I had this 12 volt battery shorted out to this first battery. And it took out some wiring. Yeah, the wiring went up in flames. Fortunately I had thin wires. That went up in smoke and half these relays burnt out. Or well, certainly these dual contact ones, they're like three, four pound ago. They burnt these relays out. So I knew it was a bad idea to begin with. I shouldn't have continued and I did. And so now I regret it because I've destroyed some expensive relays. And when those grounds got shorted out, all four ADC inputs, the 5.5 volt tolerant or 6 volt tolerant on this chip, they all blew up. I've still got like another 28 more, but I just, I gave up. I prefer working with these microcontrollers. This is a PIC32MZ. The downside is, this is only 3.3 volts, up to a maximum of 3.6. But the programmer only supplies 3.3 volts. Yeah, so you've got 0.3 volt margin before this gets destroyed and these microcontrollers are 10 pound each. The ADC pins are 5 volt tolerant. You can put 5 volts into an ADC pin and many of the others and it won't destroy the chip. So I've been really careful with my grounds since swapping over to this one. I do not want to destroy this chip. Two advantages with this PIC32MZ. It will run this colour screen faster than an 8-bit microcontroller. And the analog to digital converter is 12-bit, not 10-bit. Now I made a mistake the other day. I have, I have left a note in the show more. A 12-bit analog to digital decoder will give you resolution down to 0.001 not a 16-bit as I previously mentioned and that's 0 0.001 at 5 volts. This 12-bit ADC is giving me a resolution of 800 microvolts so 0 0.0008. However because I've got long leads to the ADC and I have to use a divider because each cell is more than 3.3 volts, 
I have to use this divider and I've got noise. For the regular viewers, you know I developed this font system where you don't need to write a number and then blank it before writing another. It's all automatic. So because I have to use a floating point on this microcontroller, today I've developed a floating point number. This is actually multiplying pi times 4. So 12.5, but up here, 3.34 volts on the input of this ADC, and that's after it's been divided twice. These resistors for 10 are already over five pound. Instead of having two resistors on the second one, I'd need four, and an eight, and 12 or more. And I'll still end up with the same problem as before, I'll be dividing the whole battery pack voltage, not looking at individual cells. So I'll still have the same trouble as the other day, but more on that later. What I've developed since the last video is the ability to discharge one cell, namely this high one, the one that sits up at 12, 13 volts. The pick drives an optocoupler. The output of the optocoupler is grounded here to this top cell and when the optocoupler turns on it drives this FET and this FET shorts out the positive through a 1 ohm resistor. Since the batteries are 3.3 volts, so 3.3 volts through a 1 ohm resistor you'll get 3.3 amps and you'll get 3.3 volts across that resistor. When this is shorting out and this is turned on the LED lights up. I'll show you. But so my problems don't end there. It's sort of back to where I started. What also arrived today from RS Components, a microchip 12-bit ADC. I think it's a SOT 23 5-pin, so they're very small. Less than £2 each. I thought, great, as someone suggested in a video, just get some ADCs, controlled via I2C, stick four ADCs on the batteries, communicate to this main controller via I2C and display the voltage. Sounds great, doesn't it? But I know it's not. Have a look at this drawing. I did this the other day before ordering the ADCs from RS Components. And I think I've got a similar problem to discharging each battery. You tell me if I'm wrong. So each ADC you can stick on a battery. The ADC uses the supply voltage as a reference and divides the supply, so in, namely in this case it's 5 volts. So it divides 5 volts by 4096 to give you a 12 bit ADC reading. The ADC has to be grounded to each battery. Sounds straightforward, doesn't it? Until you think, right, 5 volts. Let's put 5 volts onto this one, ground that, Shouldn't be a problem. We've got 3.6 volts here. That should measure the 3.6 volts. This 5 volt power supply has its separate ground. Could be mains ground. So what happens when we drive 5 volts into this ADC and we've already got 3.6 here? We're not going to have 5 volts across this ADC. Now some ADCs work down to 2.7. This one doesn't. It's a 5 volt ADC. But let's jump up to the worst case. This one. So 5 volts coming in, ground, measure the 3.3 volts here, but this ground is up at 10 volts. So what, 10 volts on the ground and 5 on the V+. Plus. If it doesn't blow it up, it's not going to work. This is exactly the same problem I envisaged discharging each battery. So I could take this 5 volt supply, ground it to here, and this is fine, or take this 5 volt supply, ground it to here, and this is fine. This ground would be negative with respect to this one and the 5 volt supply. It's a vicious circle. So before ordering four of these ADCs, I thought I'd buy two of these. So first of all, while I'm on the RS page, here's the microchip 12 bit ADC. 22.3 kilo samples per second, SOT 23 5 pin, £1.82 
plus the VAT each. Right, so this device, Iris part number 1234605, oh is this. It's a Murata power supply solution. It's DC to DC converter, 5 volts DC, 200 milliamp output, 4.5 to 5.5 DC input, 1 watt. So just a couple of hundred milliamps. I thought, what if I have five of these? But they're £2.58 each plus the VAT. I've already wasted money on these, or potentially. The advantage with this DC to DC converter is, if I scroll down, isolation. The isolation voltage, one kilovolt DC. So, oh, there's the output current, 200 milliamps, through hole. So the efficiency isn't great, 70%, but what do I expect for £2.58? So I'm assuming in this little device, there must be an isolated transformer, 5 volts in, 2 isolated supplies out. So you've got plus 5 and ground, then plus 5 and ground out. And these two are not connected to those two. So for £2.58 each, I'm going to try it. I only bought two because I didn't want to waste my money. I thought maybe I have to go up some voltage and use a regulator because they're not regulated outputs. And I'll need a regulated output for the ADC accuracy. I'm going to try one of these. I'll try one or two of these. Does that give me what I want? Four 5 volt supplies. And so back to this. If I have four 5 volt supplies, so I've got plus or minus 5 volts here, and they can be grounded here. Another 5 volts here with its own ground, another 5 volts here with its own ground, and similarly with this one. So four separate 5 volt supplies that can each be grounded to the respective battery, and then the ADC will run off that the ADC will run off its own 5 volt power supply. Yeah, I ordered two because I am worried about the accuracy of the output, especially for like £2.50 each. The ADC on here is reliant upon the supply voltage as its reference. So if the reference is drifting or moving or has a lot of noise, then your ADC measurement is going to be noisy. And this has got a 500 millisecond delay. This is already noisy. So 3.34, 3.33, 3.29. .3, this is like really slowed down. So if I measure, I don't need or want the third decimal place because it fluctuates badly. Well, so I'll measure this first battery, 3.339. So 3.339, and this is fluctuating 3.330 I just saw, a 4, 2, that should be 3, 3.33. So it's not bad, considering I'm dividing that battery by 2 and multiplying it when it gets down here. So the 12-bit ADC on here is certainly more accurate than the 10-bit, but because it's so fast and sensitive, I've got a problem with noise and these long wires. But the ADC to the microcontroller is always going to have long wires, unless I can get those microchip, separate chip ADCs, mounted on the battery with the 5-volt supplies. Let me scroll down the ADC code. So my mind's been commented out. I've put page numbers for various bits. Right, so it starts here. Where they use this code, or even microelectronics library, this isn't using their ADC library. You have to declare the voltage reference, otherwise it won't work. Obviously set your input and turn the ADC on. Right, so from here, let me scroll, start scrolling down. Still going, still going, 
Right, that's the end there, and there's a little filter bit here. All of this code I found on Microelectronica's forum today, and it was done by Bill Leg, what was that, Liege Leg, in 2007. And there's a link in the file if you want it. Some of these bits, when they're set to zero, that's the default value. I generally don't set zero bits, I don't include them. If they're already zero is default, I leave them out. So a lot of lines have zero, so maybe they can be deleted. Some of the ADC functions are shared. They've got turbo function and everything, but this bit in particular, you can tell I wanted like, channel three ADC to go into a filter data register and that filter data over samples that channel in this case 128 times and you look at the filtered data in the data register and I've left it here in my right number function ADC filter data 1 that, that is a slow moving number just moving here once well, so I've reprogrammed my microcontroller this optocoupler is now active, 5 volts from my power supply on the collector of the optocoupler, turning this FET on, shorting out the battery by this 1 ohm resistor. So 3.3 volts through a 1 ohm resistor, 3.3 amps, although I'm just measured 3.4 volts, so we'll have 3.4 volts across there. And this yeah, it's hot. This is only a 3 watt resistor, it needs to be 10 watt. Yeah, the FET doesn't get too hot, but it's actually heated by the end of this resistor. If I touch this end, yeah, this is quite warm. So this is on for half a second, then off for half a second. Oh, didn't make much of a noise there, but trust me, oh, hopefully you can see the steam coming off that. So very quickly before I go, this is my microcontroller. This is the resistor divider I've got at the moment. Two is better than one since it halves the current drawn continually. In this case it's about seven, eight hundred microamps. Here's the optocoupler. Broadcom HCPL817. I've got five or six milliamps through here, through this 330 ohm. Or oh, a little note up there. 1.7 volt drop on the LED, approx. 3.3 volt from the microcontroller. Take 1.7, that's 1.6 volts left. 1.6 volts divided by five milliamps, or 0 0.005 amps. 320 ohms. Got a 320 ohm. 5 volt supply from the power supply as you saw, a resistor to ground and so at this point when this turns on you get a voltage here less than 50 milliamps, it's actually 0.4 of an amp roughly controlled by this 120 ohm resistor to the ground at this point it's in phase with the input that small amount of current turns this FET on which shorts the battery out through this 1 ohm resistor and you can see my little resistor and LED diode lighting up there. RS part number 182.7152. It's a 55 volt FET, depending on how you drive the gate. 65 amp at 4.5 volts, 18 milliohm RDS on. If you drive it up to 10 volts on the gate, 80 amp, and the RDS on comes down to 12 milliohms. The gate minimum threshold is 1 to 2 volts. But have a quick look at this and notice so my PIC is currently connected to the programmer and that's connected to the computer earth and mains earth shown here. Back to the age old problem. This 5 volt supply is currently got a floating earth, no ground. That's that one over there. So just like the ADC, 
I can't connect this. I can't reproduce this circuit and stick this there, there and there because I'll be shorting out all the grounds. So I think the best option are hopefully these. So that will be in the third video to this series of the battery management systems and DIY build your own. Hopefully you found this informative, maybe you learned a thing or two. If you did, leave a comment and like before, thank you for all your comments. I appreciated them all. Uh, if you've got any more comments, just leave them below. For my C file, which has a, the right number function developed by me, so no blanking required, and now a float. It can write a float, no blanking required. This is specifically for the ILI9341. I do do others, have a look at my previous videos. I'll leave this C file in the show more. This is a pi multiplied by four, that you saw on the display, 12.5 volts. For this file, I'll put it in GitHub and put a link in the show more. If you want to donate a coffee for my time developing this system, there's also a link in the show more. Thanks for watching.